Tonight's spine tingling episode of Downstreams is brought to you by Rocketeer Robot. Hey out there, internet people, what's going on? It's uh, Leroy, Eleanor. I'm Eleanor. We're at 40 Ounce Streams, um, and we have a special guest today. Uh, first, who are you? I am Zach Carlson. <laughs> uh, I'm an Austin resident. I'm obsessed with a lot of different things that don't have any value in the world. And uh, I'm, I just quit my job to try my hand at homelessness. So this is a copy of your book, Destroy All Movies. Uh -huh. um, it actually belongs to the Austin Public Library, and we were hoping that you could autograph it for them. Will I get fined? We will. We were <laughs> but that's okay, we don't mind. Okay, do I do this right now? Yeah, sure. So thank you for signing that. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably never know. Like, who knows? Like, people who read it will, but yeah. hopefully you yeah. don't read this out. Anyway, so that's your book, Destroy All Movies. Yes. Um, how influential was Scarecrow Video in creating the book? Oh boy, we can talk about video stores, that's good. That's <laughs> my favorite thing to talk about maybe in the whole world. Awesome. Uh, so we were going to approach this stupid idea that we would had like as, I guess, efficiently as possible. So we decided we wanted to write a book that not was just about like the specifically influential or well-known punk movies like Repo Man yeah. and Return of Living Dead and, and Times Square, but we wanted to like get really broad and introduce people and ourselves to movies that we've never heard of or they would have never heard of. And that kind of grew until Brian, who's my best friend and co-writer and everything, um, you know, he and I agreed that we were just going to try to find every single punk or new waiver in every movie made in the 20th century, regardless of wow. what country the movie was from, or even if the punk was on screen for like 0.01 second. That store is really the Library of Congress of video, and they are, as far as I know, the largest film resource in the world. And a lot of great things could not exist if not for Scarecrow Video, who are still around and totally financially struggling. Oh, really? But there's no way we could have done that book without that store. Pretty curious what got you into horror in the first place. Um, I got really deeply into horror, uh, not as early on as other people, but what it all stemmed from was my fascination with the Godzilla movies as a little kid. Cool. Because I've always been more entertained by the creativity inherent in monster movies, and really great monster movies, than any, any of like the gratuitous nudity or like, you know, the harsh extreme gore and all that right. shit like I, I do enjoy some slasher movies and I do like a lot of the stuff that you know is outside of the monster realm but like really when I was a kid I was so just determined to live in a world where monsters can and might actually exist like that was so important to me and I really want to believe in them like yeah. even though I have never believed in God and I've always <laughs> yeah. been like completely opposed to any sort of religion. Christians believe in God because they really need that crush and they really want to believe in God. <laughs> I think like I believe in monsters because I, I need to believe that there's something more interesting than the human race yeah. out there because the human race is a total letdown. And so uh, that's, <laughs> that's where I got into horror movies and monsters from. You might not have this, but we're going to get to anyways, even if you do. Um, it's a copy of... Uh, hard and Heavy Video Magazine? Yeah, it's hard and heavy Which volume? Heavy. Oh, not that's true. Sure. It's got Nirvana on it. What? Yeah. This is when things started changing. Yeah. Yes. Tin Machine, not hard or heavy. <laughs> Nirvana, of course, being from that part of the country and specifically playing Phoenix House in Olympia. Mm -hmm. We're kind of curious if you ever, with Nervous System, played Phoenix House as well. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Are you serious? Yeah, this is weird. You guys are bringing up all these man. different <laughs> chapters. Um, the best Nirvana based story from Olympia. I lived in Olympia for 11 years, so that's where I met my writing partner, Brian. Uh, Kirk Cobain had irresponsibly gotten a couple pet turtles while he was touring a lot, and so those turtles got passed down between friends, and I ended up uh, being the caretaker for the turtles for a couple months. That's awesome! We weren't able to make our bills one month, and um, I <laughs> had to change the toilet seat because it had broken. The toilet seat was just like split in half, okay. and my roommate was like, wait! Kirk Cobain sat on that toilet seat. <laughs> and so he put it up on eBay Japan, where apparently in Japan, like, Nirvana is the biggest musical 
you know, sensation that has ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> and he sold this toilet seat for like three hundred dollars awesome. to some Japanese fan. And he wasn't lying. Like Kurt Cobain had used that toilet seat. Like, <laughs> I mean, that had the thing hadn't changed in twenty years. Question: Why is VHS so awesome? VHS is not awesome. Uh, VHS is not a great format, but it's really important to me because the only reason I care about it so much, and the only reason I have three thousand movies on VHS, is because. Those are all movies that have not been released on another format. Really? Every one? Yeah, I've got like... Cool. I think I've got, I've got six movies on VHS that have come out on DVD, and it's only because the DVD covers were like super computer-generated, glossy bullshit trying to appeal to modern young people. Mm -hmm. So I just like, I can't, I can't own this copy of, you know, whatever, like, you know, Werewolf Woman, where there's like some busty, like... Baywatch type girl hairbrush <laughs> on the cover, but yeah. the movie was made in the 70s. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. I just, that's too much. But yeah. the point is, for me, is it's like VHS matters because the movie matters, and if that's the only way to watch the movie, then like it's really weird to cut yourself off from that because you don't like the format. So anyone who thinks that everything's available through like Netflix and all this stuff, oh. like, are they're out of their minds? Like, there's yeah. so much shit that you can't get. I mean, I don't know. I don't have Netflix, but like, you know, there's just so much stuff if you actually devote yourself to something like you can discover so many treasures, you know, it's, it's like, true. it's still there. Now that vampires and zombies have been played out in mainstream sense, yeah. what monsters are you hoping get big next? This is going to be a two-part answer. Cool. Um, I think the next type of monster that should get big is a new monster that we don't already have. Yay! I don't, that's really frustrating to me, like, you know, it's like, you say, look, there's a monster movie, so it's like, oh, is it a mummy, or a vampire, or a Frankenstein, or a wolfman? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, like, like, no, it's, it's this thing that you don't know about. Like, it's a tree that turns inside out and vomits. And they're like, what, is, what? No, you can't. That's not a monster. You know, like... That sounds good, though. I would watch that. Yeah. Actually, there's a movie called From Hell It Came from 1964 that is pretty close to that. But anyway, <laughs> um, the new monsters, that's what we Like, the whole thing about monsters, the beauty of them, is they can be anything. But uh, the other part of my... <laughs> my rage about monsters was actually just this morning I was like, you know, running around the house complaining about the world, which is what I do every morning <laughs> with my wife. And uh, nice. I said, I said like, do you realize that the human race had been completely demolished by that comet, that meteor that went by last yes. week? Mm -hmm. Like people would look at America, you know, like pop culture yeah. in America, like youth culture or whatever. Yeah. And they would say, okay, well the three things that were defining pop culture at the point that the world ended, Oh. The three things that were defining us were like mustaches, bacon, and zombie movies. Like that's like basically that's like where we're at right now. Like you're like, oh, mustaches, am I right? Oh, bacon makes everything better. Oh. Like this is like, did you see The Walking Dead last week? Too wild. It's just like this is our whole culture. Like we don't have yeah. anything regress regress beyond to like. We did we always have something to attach ourselves to before? Like you know, like there was there was movements or there was like huge cultural shifts. Like, it's like oh. Now we're listening to, like, hip-hop music. Oh, before we were listening to punk music, you know? Like, <laughs> like, there were things that people were excited about, and now it's seriously just, like, all people have is, like, irony and mm -hmm. reprocessed entertainment, and that's it. That's all they have. There are people, of course, like, there have always been who make it into this, like, exclusive collector's thing, where it's like, I have the rarest tape of this movie. You're never going to see it. You'll never <laughs> know what it is. And it's just like, you know, those people are... Tell us, what's a good time of year to go vampire hunting in Bavaria? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh... Do, Brian, who's my writing partner, uh, had spent a couple months in Bavaria when he was 18. He had really loved it, and a lot of the villages look like they're made out of gingerbread and stuff. Like, it's like really this beautifully outdated kind of cartoon world in like more rural areas. And uh, I don't like vampires very much because they're kind of sissies. You know, like they're like way too fancy, like they're all seductive and they wear nice clothes and all this bullshit. Um, so, but I like vampire hunters because they're kind of like blue collar, like they're like the hard workers, like the plumbers of the monster world, you know? It's like, we gotta get this job done, we're gonna do this thing. I'm skilled, but no one respects me, you know, it's like totally being a plumber. And anyway, so we said, let's write a vampire hunter movie, but without any of those stupid vampires in it. And so, Brian said, let's do it in Bavaria, you know, and we wrote this movie about a guy who is making every attempt to rid the world of vampires, but he's delusional and doesn't understand that he's just murdering old men in Bavaria. <laughs> so we've spent the last 11 years nearly getting it made. If there's been four times where somebody's like, I'm gonna make that movie. Awesome. Here's, here's the producer, here's the money, we're gonna do it. And we're just like, oh boy, yeah. good. 
<laughs> and then like something will happen that person will be like, oh, I'm a reborn Christian now. I don't want to make a war movie or whatever. <laughs> that's weird. But I mean, that's true. Like you hear, yeah. I can't be too, you know, indignant and it's like, you know, just depressed and self-indulgent about <laughs> the fact that it keeps getting canceled. Because you hear about filmmakers like Darren Aronofsky, who did Black Swan, mm -hmm. the producer who lady is trying to help us with our movie, works with him all the time, and she said that he still can barely ever get his projects made. Like really? he'll come to, I mean, hit, like Black Swan was this huge hit, and it made like it really dark, thirty times its budget. But yeah, it was like yeah. It, he proved he could make a movie that people would go watch, even if it wasn't marketable, and he still has to like beg anyone to give him like a dollar to make a movie. <laughs> so now that Joe. Zimba? Yeah! Yes. yes, did I pronounce it correctly? No, but I like that. I figured. It's a Z-Amba. Z-Amba, okay. Yeah. So now that Joe Z-Amba from Bleeding Skull is taking over Terror Tuesday, what's mm -hmm. next for Zachary Carlson in the future? Oh, that's not my name either. What? It's not it's Zachary? Not. No, really? Zachariah. Oh, Zachariah. Cool. I'm so I'm so devoted to the Bible that I had to correct you. Yes. This is my biblical name. Uh, I am going to continue like banging my face against the brick wall of creative work. Cool. Um, we made like enough money off of our seven year book project to buy like three sandwiches. So I'm going to maybe work on getting that book reprinted and getting yeah. another book, I have a couple book ideas. Right now, um, we've been working on a screenplay for this movie that uh, is for a filmmaker who's actually gotten movies made, and he seems cool. to be genuinely interested in making this movie. But like he came to us and said, write this thing, I want to make this movie. Oh, awesome. Because years ago I found this comic book at this old, like, busted up Amarillo comic book shop. Mm -hmm. And it was a self-published, like, Xeroxed, homemade vigilante comic book from New York in the early cool. 80s. So it was like this kind of impotent superhero revenge comic book thing, like, kind of crudely done. But it was great, and it was super sincere, and I was yeah. just like, I love this comic. Cool. And I tracked down the guy who like made the comic in the 80s, and I was really? like, you know, I was like, would you allow us to try to make a movie out of this? And he's like, oh my god, I'm so embarrassed you found that, but totally, do it. <laughs> he's like, yeah, that'd be great. He's like, are you kidding? Like, to write to the comic book, if you enjoyed it and you wanted to write a fan letter, mm -hmm. you had to send it care of the restaurant that the guy worked at. No way. Oh. Yeah, and he was like a fry cook, and he'd be like, oh, I got a letter from my comic book. That's pretty awesome. Um... Is there anything that you would like to talk about in this video that we have not, wait. That we have not talked about? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just like the same old, like, bitter old man thing. Like, <laughs> I've been saying the same shit since I was 15, but now I'm 37, and so I am turning into that grumpy old turd. I just feel like there's so few people that are tr making any effort to make the world smarter or better or funner. Yeah. And there's so few people that, like, even understand that that's an option. Whereas this is incredible, crushing, like majority of people who just are just like laying on their side, like on the ground, just being like, yeah. "Give me food, give me sex," <laughs> like you know, it's like waiting for things to be given to them. So it's like I just basically want me and everyone else who is making any effort to make the world more fun at all, like to maybe just even you know pool our ideas on like. How do you make the world less shitty? Like, what do you do to make things better? Like, I don't think art is important intrinsically. I don't think music is good intrinsically. I don't think it matters unless it's like interesting and original. Yeah. So it's not enough just to be a musician, or it's not enough to be like, you know, into a thing. It's like you have to try to find new ways to do a thing, and then ways to like get other people excited to do new things themselves. And that's yes. like, to me this huge mystery that I'll probably never unlock. But it's like. Like, why doesn't everybody want to make the world less shitty? So, I'm excited that there are people that are doing projects and good things that are also probably confused at why the world is shitty. <laughs> Thank you, that means a lot. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe you think the world is perfect right now. Oh, <laughs> no. The human race is at its apex right now. But that's wrong. Well, I'm Lee Roy. I'm Eleanor. I'm Zach. <laughs> awesome. Good night, Internet. Good night. You're almost full, Internet. Yep. <laughs>